Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. Welcome back if you've been here before and welcome if you're new here. Today is 10-10, October 10th, the 10th of October. And so I have an angel message reading for you today just to get you some uh, messages from the other side, maybe some check-in things that maybe can give you a little guidance or things to think about and reflect on for what resonates for you. Okay, I have three groups for you. You can go ahead and pick by the card you can see, the number, the sound of my voice, group one, group two, or group three. When you're ready, all the timestamps are below, and I will see you at the reading that you chose. Hi, everyone. Welcome to everyone who picked group number one. So you all pick the card, the angel of wisdom. Wisdom comes from the depths of my experience. So this is a really good reminder that whatever you want to choose to believe or think about or whatever, you can go on the internet, you can search whatever you can look in books you can you can find something to affirm what you want to believe right so whatever thing whatever school of thought or way you want to think about something or handle a problem there will be people out there giving you advice to handle it a certain way or to affirm that certain way but what this is saying is wisdom comes from the depths of my experience so you can take all that outside information but if it doesn't resonate for you and it doesn't feel like oh yes that's the thing i want to do or that's the thing that makes sense for me and it's probably not going to get you to where you want to go, okay? So it's really important for you to remember that <clears throat> your experiences and what you learn from those and how you choose to assimilate and discern that information, that is where your wisdom comes from. And that is where you orient your power to yourself and your own understanding and what you want from this world and the path you want to go on and what feels right for you and how you find what's right for you and how you say no and have boundaries to what's what's not for you, right? So the angel of wisdom is the reminder that your experiences are helping you learn things, but also like what you feel in your heart and what feels resonant for you and what feels like truth and what feels like, yes, this is for me. That's where we get wisdom about our own selves and our own lives and what to do. You can read all this stuff in the world, but making someone else your outside authority, you know, it doesn't, it's not gonna stay with you long-term. Now, obviously there are situations where it's like, I need an outside authority on this to help teach me information, that's different, right? But just not thinking for yourself, not making a decision, not whatever, when it's a choice between like, which of these things feels more resonant for me, that's where we mess ourselves up. And that's where we um, get confused about what our own wisdom is. So trusting what you feel in your heart, trusting, like, even if it doesn't make logical sense, even if everyone in the world is doing it this way, but you're like, mm, I kind of want to do it this way over here, right? So trusting that, trusting your path and trusting like your innate wisdom as a way to help you get to where you want to go is going to serve you long term. So the angel of wisdom we got for you, group one. Okay, I'm going to look at some tarot cards for you, and then a few oracle cards, and then we will close with the uh, affirmation card. Yeah, we need to, you need to be a little more thoughtful, not you need to, but what the cards are saying is it would be advised for you to be a little more thoughtful, okay? So we have two of wands, eight of wands, and eight of swords, okay? So this is about taking time to be reflective and be thoughtful and really determine what do I want? Because when you rush into action, when you just like have a feeling and then act on the impulse of it and just go do something, then sometimes we can feel helpless because we're just in reactive mode instead of, again, using this, uh, wis this angel of wisdom energy of like what actually works for me, what feels right for me. You know, sometimes our reactions are so ingrained, of it, ingrained in us that we don't even realize that um, we have another choice, right? And reactions don't always have to be explosive. They can be, you know, being passive or not standing up for myself or not saying something. And reactions can also be, of course, just like, cussing someone out or, you know, doing something extreme or having an intense reaction to something, right? Those can also be reactions. But when you take a moment to be thoughtful and even just be like, okay, how could I respond in this situation? What's something I could do differently or something I haven't done before or, you know, something like this. So be, taking a moment to be reflective, turn inward, practicing a pause between, you know, what actions you take, because when we're just reckless, right, then we end up feeling helpless and like, wow, I'm just at the mercy of, these things and I can't control myself and whatever. And it takes time to change patterns, but it is about turning inward and just being like, is this a way I wanna be acting and behaving and be anymore? Why or why not? And so what do I wanna do with that once I know it? Um, but again, knowing your wisdom, it comes from the depths of your experience. It's also remembering that like you have a choice in what you say, what you do, how you show up um, and all of that. 
And it takes time and it takes um, practice to change those. So don't beat yourself up if it <laughs> takes a little while to do it, but you definitely can, you know, it's, it's possible to have a different experience um, with that. Yeah, because look, we have the magician, ace of cups and seven of cups. Okay. So again, this is about choice, right? This is the suit or the card with all the suits on there. So you have a choice of deciding how do I want to respond? What do I want to do? How do I want to show up? How do I want to be different? And when you do that, that feels so much more fulfilling than this like helplessness, right? This Ace of Cups is the overflow. It's like, wow, I'm doing things for myself. I'm showing up. I'm doing all of that, right? And then the Seven of Cups is like, and look at all these options I have. Wow, you know, again, not just this thing of, okay, someone says this thing and then I just react all the time, right? So like, what could I do? I could do what I've always done. I could say something else. I could not do anything. I could take it this different action. I could, you know, whatever. But so trusting that, you know, you can have a different choice. You can rewrite your patterns. It can take some time and practice and be frustrating. Okay. It's very, I'm not trying to minimize the emotional process that goes with this, right. But just remembering you do have a choice. You can do something different. Um, when you do that internal emotional exploration and pausing and staying with yourself and seeing what's going on there that opens you up to a whole other different types of possibilities and things you can do and, and all that stuff for yourself. Okay, I wanna look at some Oracle cards for you. Regenerate, okay, so yeah, so this is just a reminder that you can regenerate, you can do something else. Sometimes we identify so much with just like, oh, that's just the way I am, or that's just my pattern, or that's just what I've always done, that we're just like, we can't even think that another possibility could be for us, or we can't even think like, well, who, if I'm not like this person who reacts at this thing, or like, here's this word and I shut down, or like, if I'm not that, then who am I? What do I do? Like, how do I even exist in the world, right? So regenerate can be a reminder that, you know, it's okay for you to, take the time of, um, you know, wanting to be different and doing something different. And it does take time and practice, but you are able, there is like in internal part of ourselves that doesn't alter or change, but there's also part of us that can change and um, can be rewritten no matter how long we've had these certain patterns or how many lifetimes in our family this has happened, or if you believe in reincarnation, how many times you've done that, right? We can change if you're willing um, to look at the pattern and maybe not change in the way you hope, but if you're willing to look at it, there can be some regeneration and something new going on uh, for you there. Okay, let me get one more card for you. Success. Okay, so this is very clear that if you've been wanting to listen to yourself um, or uh, have a different experience or be different, you know, this is possible for you. And it is helpful for you to get clear again about what's going on inside of you, what you want, um, and trusting that to unfold into, um, and success does, it's not about guaranteeing an outcome, but it is about being willing to change yourself and controlling what we can control, which is typically just ourselves, right? We can influence other things based on the choices we make, but we still can't control anything outside of us. So success, this is more about like turning inward and feeling better and changing like our internal state with things versus guaranteeing like a specific outcome if we do a particular way because we can't guarantee anything, right? So success, turn inward, what does it feel like for you? How does it, how's it going for you? All of that. Um, but just again, feeling like even feeling on this card, right? Jumping for joy of like, oh my God, I'm so different. Things are so different. I'm, you know, whatever. Okay, we'll close with one affirmation card for you, group one. I am sustained by love. Okay, yes. Yeah. So the other thing I'm hearing with this is if you want to change your patterns, it's important for you to do it in a kind, loving, gentle way instead of judging yourself. Okay, <laughs> like you, you. Sometimes we can get there with harshness, but it doesn't feel good long term. Doesn't actually support us. Um, it kind of uh puts a a rip in our relationship with ourselves, which doesn't feel the best. So I am sustained by love as a reminder. Like, can I do this in a loving? gentle way um that's helpful for myself yeah, that's everything i have for you thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today if you ever want any more information about me all that is linked below thank you so much and i hope you have a wonderful day hi everyone welcome this is for everyone who picked group number two so you all pick the card the garden angel of spiritual growth the way i become spiritual is simply to become myself 
So this is a really good reframe and a reminder. Sometimes when we think about, I want to become more spiritual and I want to grow and I want to expand on the soul level, right? Well, a lot of times we think about adding things, like what else do I need to do? But a healthy reframe and what this is saying is like just removing things that aren't really us and like becoming more of ourselves, right? Taking the masks off, putting things down that don't resonate for us, that don't feel good for us, that don't, you know, whatever. So the way I become spiritual is simply to become myself is a reminder that you don't need to, um, you know, do a bunch of things because you see other people doing them, right? So it's like, okay, I have to buy these 20 things and I need to be doing this particular practice in this particular way, right? Becoming yourself also means like, which of these things actually feel resonant for me? And there can be a learning curve of like, it doesn't feel completely natural to me because I haven't practiced it for a while yet, but there can also be the learning curve of like, this is just absolutely not for me and I keep forcing it and it's just not working and that's why, right? So the way I become spiritual is simply to become myself is a reminder that there are ways for you to show up as yourself and show up to what feels connected and good for you, but it's up to you to determine which of those things are, right? Becoming ourselves is a lot of times we take the pressure off ourselves. We realize, okay, I don't have to do these 20 million things. I don't have to buy all this stuff, you know, to have like, this image and this thing, being spiritual is about what's inside and what that looks like for you. And then like how it manifests physically and shows up in the physical realm is different for everyone. And so becoming more of yourself is just about cutting out, okay, what doesn't work for me? What does work for me? This is good for me. This is not right. Like sorting through those things, spiritual tools work, but only if they resonate for you, only if they feel helpful to you. Um, but if it's like pushing yourself and again, pushing it, like getting used to it versus like, this is absolutely not for me. And I keep trying to make it be, you know, all of that is going to be really important for you. So just really, um, honoring that and trusting, <clears throat> you know, spiritual growth can look like releasing things, letting things go, having less things, being less attached to material presentation of things. Right. So the guardian angel, spiritual growth, spiritual growth can be about letting things go, about stop pretending, taking the mask off, um, getting more clear about like, you know what, I don't want to do these certain things anymore. I don't want to engage in these relationships. I don't want to have these certain behaviors or patterns anymore, right? And holding space for that instead of just like, oh, I need to be doing this, this, and this thing. So again, how can you become more of yourself? How, how are you already <clears throat> embodying things that feel good for you, but you feel like, oh, I can't do them because they're like, quote unquote, not spiritual, or I need to buy these 20 million things to be spiritual, or I need to look this certain way or do this certain thing when it's so much more about like, you know, spiritual is literally spirit, like the thing we can't see, like within our, our hearts and souls and our bodies. So what, what can you do to like affirm that that's not just like buying stuff or having a certain image or, you know, whatever, what feels good for you? What feels like you being yourself, your authentic full self? Okay, I'm going to look at some tarot cards for you. Yeah, so I see we got here um, the Fool in Reverse, Nine of Pentacles, and Six of Wands. Okay, so you're done being a fool, okay? You're done. I feel like this is a little bit about you've been lying to yourself of just like, oh, I need to do this thing and then my life will be better. Like, if those things feel good to you, then do them. But, um, you know, if they don't, then then just resonate or then just, uh, you know, kind of don't do it if it doesn't resonate. But so this is, you know, really when you stop pretending, you really you feel like connected and clear within yourself. And also that radiates outward into the world. Right. And you're able to find the things that are for you. You have better discernment around this works for me. This doesn't work for me. This is what I want. This is what I don't want. Right. So you're able to do some of those things in a way that's actually helpful and helps everyone. Right. You're more true to yourself. So you can find things that are for you. And then when you're in spaces that feel good for you, you're able to share your gifts and be there and find like minded people and like hearted people. Right. So this is really I just hear like stop pretending you know what you need to let go of, you know what you need to stop doing, you know what you want to stop pretending. And like, again, this is using discernment around there, certain things of like, this is absolutely not for me and I'm trying to force it versus like, this is where I want to grow into, but I'm just not there yet. And that's okay. We're, we're always expanding and growing and changing, but just remembering that, you know, you can um, find space to be able to release that and, you know, grow in this way for yourself. Um, and when you stop pretending, then your authentic self can come through and that can help you connect 
and grow and just even feel more at peace and accepting of yourself of just like this is who I am and I accept it you know accepting ourselves for who we are is like one of the greatest gifts we can give ourselves yeah I just feel like this is your soul your soul has been asking for this for a really long time okay so we have the five of cups in reverse um six of pentacles in reverse and page of pentacles so I feel like there's going to be like you know, we break our own hearts when we try to be something we're not or try to force something that isn't for us or try to pretend like something is going on that we can feel in our hearts is not actually for us or true or anything like that. So like, this is the end of like the loss, right? This is the end of the slow heartbreak and breaking our own hearts and just disappointing our own selves and not showing up for ourselves with all of that, right? And then this is also the end of like being, being, having helplessness, right. And like having this victim mindset. And there are definitely things in life where we deserve to say we were a victim, right. Where things that happened to us, but, um, taking the hyper focus off of that eventually when you had your process and things and instead being like, okay, how can I reorient my power to myself? What do I want to do? How do I want to be? What feels right for me? And then again, look at this rebirth, this re-energy, right? Just like, oh my gosh, look, I finally, after everything, I have this new idea. I have this new planted seed of abundance. I have this new way of what I want to do, how I want to go forward. So it's like peeling back a lot of the layers of the onion and peeling back a lot of the ways that we're like, oh, maybe I, you know, it is time for me to do something different or be different or just, you know, look at this little gem that's like been in my heart all along of how I want to be, but I just wasn't letting myself for whatever reason. And no judgment, we're all on our own timelines, we're all on our own paths. Those things happen, right? But how can you, um, you know, kind of let those things go so you are able to instead be like, okay, I see these things that are for me and I know how to work for them and not even work for them, right? I know how to stop pretending about all these other things for myself to be able to just become more of myself and become who I know in my heart I am and want to be and, and all of that. Okay, let's look at some Oracle cards. Strength. Okay. This takes a lot of strength to do this. You are very brave and very courageous to take the mask off, to stop pretending, to stop saying, you know, okay, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. Right. But this is really about it takes strength to be our true selves and to really own who we are and what we want and do that. And so if you are on this path or even contemplating it or thinking about making a big change or not even a big change, but just being different, right? That's really brave of you and really important for you to do. So again, strength is about, um, you know, just really being proud of yourself for continuing when like things suck and when like, who am I? What's going on? What do I want to do? having to realize like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, but again, having the strength there to, to keep going and to look at that, like that's very brave, right? Being willing to be like, you know what? I don't think this particular thing is working for me. I want to do something else. That's something that not everyone can do. And it's, um, you know, it's really valuable and brave to, to be able to do that. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. So this is a, I just like when the cards say yes or no, this is yes exclamation point. And you see this person is holding the sun and the moon, um, this angelic being there. And so I feel like this is just saying like finding the balance and saying you can be all you want to be. Maybe um, you felt like you couldn't be yourself because it didn't like fit with what you thought you were supposed to be or what was supposed to happen or what was supposed to whatever, right? All these shoulds, stop shooting on yourself as they say. Um, but this is really about holding the sun and the moon and just remembering like, you know, you can have yes with balance. You can have all these things that seem contradictory at once, all these things that seem like I can't be this and this thing, or I can't be myself because it's not like what a spiritual person does. But in my opinion, God made everything on purpose and God doesn't make junk and God makes all of us, all of these multifaceted pieces that we have for a reason, right? And so just trusting, you know, this is what feels right for me and this is who I feel I am um and like holding space for that okay and then i'm going to close with one affirmation card i live in a friendly universe okay so this is just a reminder again like what i was just saying of if you trust what's in your heart like trust that like we live in a friendly universe a friendly realm where it's like um you know, I, I want to be these ways. So there must be something for me out there to exist in that way and to embody that there must be something for me on the path to get me there. If this is what I feel like I want to do. 
Um, and so just trusting that like, you know, God gives us our intuition and plants things in our heart so that we can find things that are for us that we don't even know exist or know how to get there or anything like that. So living in a friendly universe. Okay, that's everything I have for you. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. If you ever want any more information about me, all that is linked below. Thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hi everyone, welcome. This is for everyone who picked group number three. So you all pick the card, the angel of being. My soul rests in the truth that my being is eternal. Whew, that's a nice message for you. Okay, so I feel like sometimes when we're going through a hard time or we're losing something or we're growing past an old identity of ourselves or something is shedding, shifting, letting go, releasing, right? Um, sometimes it can be like, oh my God, who am I? Ego deaths feel like deaths of ourselves because we've attached to a certain identity or a way of it being for so long that we're like, who am I if I'm not this thing? Who am I if I'm not doing this? Who am I if I'm not whatever, right? And so my soul rests in the truth that my being is eternal. There's a certain part of us that is unalterable, that is can never be touched, can never be changed, even through this human experience and through the different um, people that we are through all of this, right? But there's a certain core part in our soul that can never be changed or corrupted or anything like that. And um, that's sometimes when we can remember that when we're going through these hard times, you know, there's like this very real physical part of us that's doing these things and then at the same time there's this part of us that's unalterable and unchangeable and that can just like observe and put a little space between that and so if you're feeling that way it's just to remember reminding ourselves and remembering that we can let go we can find peace we can remember that no matter what's happening in physical reality there is a part of us that is cannot be changed cannot be altered cannot be what whatever and is eternal right and so my soul rests in the truth that my being is eternal so remembering it's so much more than this realm and not minimizing not minimizing what we're going through here not pretending like it's not happening right but just remembering that it is important for us to be able to um you know kind of pull back and look at the big picture and remember what is actually the truth here what's actually going on what's actually helpful and not helpful for, for us to look at okay i'm going to look at some tarot cards for you And also, okay, the last message I'm getting with this is, you know, like, what is that unalterable part, unalterable part of you? What, what qualities does it have? Um, you know, what, what about it? You know, it's like remembering like that, that part of us is safe, right? So what qualities does that have? What parts of you is that? Um, what are the pieces that are um, eternal and are this thing that no matter what happens, like you already, you still embody that and own that, Um you know, what, what can you connect with, with that? Yeah. Okay. So we have the two of swords, nine of cups and king of pentacles. So I feel like, again, um, there's a choice here of, you know, this, you can buy into this fear thing of like, I'm just at the mercy of life and I'm not eternal and I'm not whatever, which if that's what you want to believe. That's fine. Right. But I'm assuming if you're watching this tarot reading, there's some more deeper feelings of life and contemplation here. Okay. Um, and so that's like really determining, like just really commit to this belief, really commit to safety, really commit to like surrendering to God and being a child of God. This isn't your reading. Watch one of the other groups with this. I'm getting this very clearly for group three. Okay. Um, but just determining that and just trusting like that will create emotional fulfillment, which is fulfilled and also help you feel like you know, take your mind off of things that are not actually for you, like not um, removing yourself from idol worshiping and like trying to make something God that's not God and instead filling up and connecting to that eternal part of yourself and using that to help navigate like these physical reality things we all have to do, right? So when we feel full and free on the inside, it's easier for us to navigate the world around us, to connect to that, to just realize like, okay, what do I what do I want to do? What don't I want to do? What feels right for me? What doesn't feel right for me, right? When we're connected to ourselves, it's easier to get clear about these things that don't actually matter, that the world tries to tell us matter so much. You know, when we think like, what am I doing with my eternal self? Like, how is that present in my life? What am I connected to? Like all of those things, again, create this like wishes fulfilled energy and help you navigate this physical reality. So it's both. Um, you know, it's just really trusting that and really holding space for that and, you know, not feeling like 
okay, I have to pick one or the other, or like, because I'm in, in this realm, I need to pick, you know, my eternal soul or like physical reality, right? Like you can have physical reality things and also know that you're being like connected to this eternal part of your soul and um, the other realms and all of that and, and holding space for that instead of, you know, feeling like one or the other, but um you know, there, there is a part of us that for those of us who are spiritual and connect to this path, there is a part of us that we do need and we feel better when we're connected to um, something that is eternal, something that is unchangeable, something that is unalterable, which for me, I use the word God, obviously, but that can be different for everyone. Um, and so if that's resonating for you, just really encouraging yourself to feel that and trust that and know that you can and you are allowed to have um that type of belief system if that's what feels right for you okay let me just get a few more tarot cards for you all right so we have the four of swords the high priestess and the three of swords. So I feel like, yeah, you can heal this wound in your heart by turning inward and connecting to that eternal part of yourself, right? So this is, of course, one of my favorite cards because I personally love and believe in being still, turning inward, being calm, being patient, right? And then this high priestess is about, again, like that eternal self, like the higher self, the awareness, the spiritual self, connecting to all of that, knowing that like, okay, this thing we're doing on earth right now is important and I'm here, but again, there is a part of me that is so beyond all of that. And when you do that, like that's going to heal your heart and like heal these things you tried to make God or you tried to worship or you tried to find fulfillment in. And instead, when you turn inward and you fill up with yourself, it's going to help heal all this heart wounding that most of us go through in our lives. None of us get out of here unscathed. Okay. It's part of earth, but that can help us connect to these, these things that are going on inside of us and realize, okay, I do have a choice. I can do something different. Things can be different for me in my life. And so what does that look like? And, you know, when we decide to um, invoke our spiritual practice or um, connect to the part of us that is eternal and remembering like shifting our um, overly, the way we overly identify with physical reality, which we're not pretending it doesn't exist. We're not pretending it's not something to deal with, right? But it's when it, when it tips to the point that we don't even have space to see ourselves as a soul and as a spiritual being and as something on the other side, that's when we like get ourselves confused and mess things up for ourselves. So this is a reminder that, you know, a lot of the healing and the soul work we'll do is just about um, going inward, being gentle, being patient, connecting to our own energy, feeling safe within that instead of again, pushing it outward or feeling like, you know, oh, I, I can't pretend like I don't have the spiritual part of myself when all of us do and and connecting to that. And again, like the healing that will come and soothing of our own heart when we remember that, when we turn inward, when we have a deeper relationship with ourselves, and instead of trying to grab outside things to make us feel better ourselves, we really turn inward and offer ourselves love, care, compassion, mercy, acceptance, getting to know ourselves, staying with ourselves, right? That heals so much more than buying 40 houses or having the newest car or like buying a new iPhone every week that it comes out, right? It's like, and again, we we want to have a material life that is comfortable, but it's like when that becomes the antidote or trying to fix or heal, like the things that's broken inside of us because we've rejected that eternal part of ourselves, that's when things get confusing. And that's when we break our own hearts and we, you know, stab ourselves in the chest, um, in the heart over and over again. And so again, you can heal that by connecting to like these eternal parts of ourselves and these things that are actually nourishing because they exist outside of time. And they exist beyond this realm for us. Okay, I'm going to look at a few oracle cards for you to wrap up. Brighten. Oh, that's so sweet. I just saw like a huge sun like with this. Okay, so brightening your heart, trusting this eternal part of yourself, trusting that like your whole world will brighten when you, you know, people who have an inner glow, it like radiates on their face. And a lot of times it's because they're connected to something on the other side, something eternal, the veil is lifted, right? There's some type of like someone who is connected to that and feels clear and resonant in that there's usually um, like this inner glow or inner warmth that comes out. So that's really what I'm getting with this with Brighton. Oh, this is sweet. How oh, cute. Okay, let's get one more. All right, well, this one flew out. I didn't have to pick it. Don't stop. Okay, so a lot of times when we're, when we are like, 
I'm just seeing this image of like pushing through all these like physical reality things that we get stuck in that don't work for us that whatever it's like oh my god this is so much stuff I don't want to do this anymore I don't want to whatever like this is so crazy right you know but so it's just like um you know when we sort through all of that it's we remember that like okay I don't want to do this but don't stop okay go at the pace you can go at and go at the progress you go you can take breaks but what is on the other side of that and what you can create and do for yourself when you work through that is worth like the internal struggle to do that and you're very brave and you're very courageous for doing that but don't stop keep moving forward um you know just getting to the other side and and that's gonna keep um you know it's a, it's like a a thing that feeds into itself, right? As you connect to more and more of this and we feel relief that's actual coming from a place that feels peace and is, um, you know, not fleeting and not something that we can never get enough of, right? Then that's when we feel like clear and connected and calm to ourselves. I'm going to close with one affirmation card for you, group three. everything is working out for my highest good. Yeah. So this is like trusting the path, of course, and trusting that, you know, when we go through these one tiny little things, we're like, oh my God, this is so horrible. Why is this happening? But if we can remember, we can't zoom back and remember God's in charge and remembering all of that, right? It's like, eventually most things were shown, oh, okay, that's why that had to be that way. Or that's why this had to show up that way. Or why this, you know, this is about the faith muscle. This is about surrender. This is about letting go of our preconceived notions, right? But so everything is working out for my highest good. Just a reminder that it's one thing to say that, but when you really believe that and you look for evidence of it, of how that's true in your life, how it has been true already, right? We'll just feel a sense of calm that we, you know, sometimes might not have been able to access otherwise, but everything is working out for my highest good. Definitely true. Okay. Okay. That's everything I have for you. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. If you want any more information about me, all that is linked below. Thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day.